for more on the issue, I spoke to Mackenzie Funk. He's the author of Windfall, the Booming Business of Global Warming. And he said in his book that some people and places will benefit from this. So I asked him who and where. Generally, the people who already have money and the people in the north, those are the people who will make money off climate change in the future. And, and the usual suspects will have it worse. Why, why the north? I mean, I, I guess when you say the north will benefit, <clears throat> I'm assuming the south will get hurt. And, and why yeah. is that? Um, it's a number of things, but one of them has to do with melting sea ice. Another one has to do with, with where fish stocks and, other, and agriculture will move. And, and the last thing is, is simply that the middle parts of the world will become uninhabitable or at least much less habitable, habitable than they had been. Let me talk a little politics with you for just a moment here. Um, sure. For the longest time, there, there's been a, a loud chorus of people who have been skeptical of climate change, and I have to say that a number of them have been from the investment community and the business world. Mm -hmm. The last couple of years seem to be a little bit different. There's been a tone, yeah. a different tone, of course, at the White House, a different tone among uh, business groups. You see different uh, investment funds that focus specifically on green energy. I won't go into details of all that, but I, I do notice a, a significant shift. I'm wondering if you've noticed that as well, and what has caused this particular shift in thinking? I think that's absolutely true. And I think that is in large part because the business community is a little bit agnostic when it comes down to it about, you know, like, like the military, for instance, businesses need to understand what reality is. And when 90 plus percent of the scientists say this is reality, I think it's, it's good business sense to believe it. And so businesses that have looked at those numbers and then actually even had looked at the science itself have decided this is real, this is something we need to prepare for. In fact, it would hurt our, our shareholders, hurt our investors if we don't prepare for it. So it makes business sense, and I think ultimately that's, that's what's happening. When, when I think of climate change, and I, I think a lot of people do this as well, they, they automatically think of sort of green energy. And yes, there's a whole industry uh, mm -hmm. of wind and solar and so on for that. But there's also the business of the climate change, which is, it's, it's different than green energy, right? And I, I want yes. you to help our viewers understand why is it different and what sectors ultimately may benefit, maybe farming, maybe industries we haven't even, in, even thought of yet. That's right. Well, there are two ways to look at, at dealing with climate change, and one is to prepare for the world that's to come as it gets warmer, and the other one is to try to stop that from happening. So when you talk about green energy, you're talking about solar things to emit less carbon, to create less warming, to have the planet seem like it is today. And there's a whole other way of looking at this, and that is to say, it, the world is getting warmer. We need to get ready for what that is. We need to prepare for what the world's going to become. So that could mean agriculture investment, you know, drought-proof corn, uh, rice that can handle more more water intrusion. It means uh, things like seawalls. It means going for oil in the Arctic. Some of it's very cynical, some of it's less so. But it's preparing for this world that will be different under climate change rather than trying to stop it from happening. So one of the things that we've seen in the last couple of years, at least experts have said, is you, you look at what Hurricane Katrina did to New Orleans, for example. Mm -hmm. You saw what uh, Superstorm Sandy did to the Northeast, uh, specifically in New York City. And they, some experts say that we're going to see more of these activities. So there's not just sort of the, the, the waters just rising. There's also more natural disasters. Is that, is that something that you might be worried about? Yeah, uh, I think with the jury's a little bit out as to what will happen with hurricanes and cyclones with climate change. Some people say there will be fewer storms or the same amount of storms, but they will be bigger. And I think that's, that's what people congeal around. And if you see something like Sandy, a lot of the damage was because the water has risen around New York City. The water is higher, which means the storm surge is bigger. There's more water to push toward the city. So we're talking about water damage with a lot of these storms, not, not the wind, not the rain that happens. Those are bad. But what we're really talking about is flooding from these storm surges. And that is a climate change thing because the seas have risen. And, uh, and of course, these storms are going to strike higher north. You know, New York City is not always in the eye of a storm, and now it was. And this is, this is going to be a problem, but I think the sea level rise itself causes so many problems that are, are about when it gets pushed by the waves. That's what they're pushed by the wind, and the waves push into the city. That's what we need to worry about most.